down in Alabama. Well, I ain't never stole no chicken in my life. That's what I told the judge, but he didn't believe me. <laughs>
All you independent operators need protection against yourselves. Listen, Mr. Anderson. That's one of the finest pieces of property in the country. And if I don't bring her right in over the crown, I've drilled my last well. That's how good I think it is. Difference of opinion makes horse racing. I'd rather bet my 500 on a horse. My man, you've only got 30 days left, then your lease falls back on us. You've been at it for two years now, and you haven't struck anything yet. Well, that doesn't mean I... I hate to see a friend of mine go wrong. Now, it isn't a question of the 500, Ann. Tell you what I'll do. I'll give you a thousand, so long as you don't throw it away on that empty hole. And, providing you vacate the premises, as of tomorrow. Mr. Anderson, I've wrung a lot of oil out of the earth for other people. But this one is for me. Not so much for me as for my son. I've got 30 days. And I'm going to keep on digging, even if I have to do it with my teeth. For your teeth, I hope to stand up under it. You're putting out your Christmas presents kind of early, aren't you, J.C.? What do you mean? Well, you practically laid the guy down, tried to force the grand and he's kicked. Got to stop O'Reilly from drilling another inch. Oh, why worry about him? Let him drill till he hits China if he wants to. When did I start worrying about anyone else? All right, have I got to draw a picture for you, you big lummox? I sold the man the lease two years ago because I thought it was a trick. Now my geologist tells me... The so-called boob is liable to hit the richest well in the history of the field. Any day now. No fool. The contract calls for an additional ten years lease if he strikes oil. Now, can you get that through the thing you use for a head? Oh. If he can't drill, he can't strike oil. Can he? The discovery of the Neanderthalian man marks the last link in the relationship between the ape and the man. Now then, children, so great was their development over the ape that they were able, by the first display of reasoning power, to fashion tools and implements with which they wrested a livelihood from the soil. So you see, it really marked the first stages in the progress of man's thought. Soon after that, there was a further development of man. It came about by the manner in which they solved the housing problem. They began to find caves to live in, instead of sleeping in the open, a very definite departure from the habits of animals. There was yet to come a most important break in the relationship of the Neanderthalian man to the animal world. They began to stand upright like the present-day man. Keep it! can't hurt me. Never mind, helpful Harry. You've done enough. Not Harry. Henry. Henry Langford. Well, uh, now that you've gone this far, you can drive us back to the school. With pleasure. Thousands of dollars. He working like a slave for two years, investing all that money. And he offers me a thousand dollars. I'd like to have laughed in his face. I wouldn't trust that guy any further than I could throw an elephant by the tail. When Mr. Anderson starts giving you something, you'd better look out. You've got something he wants. If we can just hold on for a couple of weeks, we'll be so darn rich we won't need to wash dishes. 
We just eat and chuck them out the window. The Murphys do that now. They got paper dishes. <laughs> <laughs> from Anderson and call it a day. Nothing personal about it, Tom. I hate to foreclose on a brand, but that's how business is. Why, hello, Dan. <laughs> well, I'm glad to see you. <clears throat> come in, come in. Does, uh, does that offer still go? Anytime you say the word. Well, now is as good a time as ever. Now you're talking sense. Uh, tell Collins to make out a check for $1,000 to Dan O'Reilly. Uh, that's it. Uh, Dan O'Reilly. Yeah. Hey, Pop, if you ain't done it, don't do it. This is Mr. Lightfoot. He wants to talk to you. Aren't you going to wait for the check? No, we don't want your check. Come on, Pop. You know, I made the uh, geological survey on the big Dalton gusher. I find the same line formation in your quartet. You really think we have a chance to bring her in? Oh, definitely. I think if we use a slip hook, we'll be able to fish up that broken equipment okay. Well, Mr. O'Reilly, I haven't got much money, but uh, I'm willing to back up judgment with it. What are you, son? Shake, Clyde. It's a deal. Hey, Snowflake. Get on this backup car, will you? Yeah. Come on, hurry up. Oh, oh, I mean today, here. Let's have that hard rock fit. Okay, coming up. Oh, no, you don't. You're going back to school where you belong. Oh, heck, Hank, I want to help you here. Can I help? Uh, yes, you can. Will you do me a favor? Sure, anything. What do you want me to do? Promise? Sure, I promise. Come on over here. No, I've been thinking. The teacher tells me you're behind your study. And uh, I thought it'd be sort of a good idea to ask her to help you catch up in your back lesson. You know, in the evenings at her home. What? Go to school at night? Well, I don't see what good that'd do you. 
And it sure wouldn't do me any good. Oh, you want to back out on your promise, eh? No, I'm not backing out, but I thought you wanted me to help you with a rig. But, oh, go to school, God. That will be tough. And I'll call for you in the car. Hey, you're not kind of falling for this, Miss Cynthia, are you? You stuck on last time, pal. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. Will you go to school? Hey, wait a minute. Okay, you win. All right. As an illustration, we'll do it again with the apple. Now, Jack has three apples, and his friend Henry has none. Apples are eight cents a pound, and Henry has two cents. Now, what happened to that third apple? I'm sure I saw it a moment ago. It now seems that Jack has two apples and Henry has one. Now you've gone and ruined my problem, you old apple snitcher. Well, if you're that hungry, I'll make you a cup of tea. Thanks, teacher. Thanks, pal. That problem had me dizzy. Don't mess How about a little music? Mm, well, that's a bit too well. Mm. I do bring my brain cold, is it cause they worry so? My teacher ought to know, she knows everything. Does a fish get thirsty, playing in the sea below? My teacher ought to know, she knows everything. That don't do me no 
good no <laughs> Oh, this is good, cool huh? I didn't you starve to death. Then how? <laughs> ah, food. All right, boys, knock off for lunch. Well, dear, what have you got there? You'll see if you follow me. Lead on. <laughs> Mr. McDuff. You can't pay me enough money. Good day, sir. <clears throat> Just a minute. Let me give you a little sound advice, young fellow. Knowledge improperly used is a dangerous weapon. You ever get cut with your own knife? Don't try any of your pretty speeches on me, Mr. Anderson. I see what you're driving at. I'm not afraid of you or your gorillas. Now, you just tend to your knitting and stop playing boogeyman with me. Anderson is leaving up it. 
At least I am. Yeah, now, wait, a wait a minute. Wait a minute. Joe will take Langford. Well, he's got something to say to you. Now settle down. All yours, Hank. Go ahead. Fellows, yeah. I haven't been here long. But I've been here long enough to know we've got to do something if we want to stay in the oil business. take your advice and mind my own business. But let me ask you a question. Do you operate a well? What's that to you? <laughs> hey, what's he doing here anyway? He works for Anderson. Well, throw him out. They got the right here. Come on, let's call him out. All right, go get him. play ball with us or we sell to somebody else. Gang, let's cram out of here. That ought to get my head to stay out of town. You mean to tell me this happened just giving a man a match? It wasn't what I gave him. It's what he gave me. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. Oh, don't stop. It didn't hurt, really. right up to you before we go any further. Well, boy, I didn't realize that my employees were practicing all sorts of abuses on people that I've been raised with. People that started with me in the oil business. I'm glad you've called this to my attention. And I assure you I'll do everything I can to put it right with you, boy. I'm positively amazed. Stevens, you'll have to account to me for this. Well, now, listen, Don't talk what? back to me. I'll see you later. And you can tell the rest of the boys for me that from now on, J.C. Anderson is back in his overalls where he belongs. Well, thank you, Mr. Anderson. Thank you. That's fine. Well, That's fine. Boys, so bad after all. I'm glad you came in. Come in any time. Doors wide open always, boys. Was that on the level? At my weight, I'm the best promiser in the country. Gotta be a little more careful from now on until I can get a couple of these troublemakers out of the way. Uh, you just tell me who's what. Oh, don't get excited. More important things to be done. Oh, you mean that O'Reilly guy, huh? Yes. Well, what are you gonna do? What are you going to do? Oh, hey, I'll go up for the this time. Okay. Hi, Bob. Hello, son. Good luck. Yeah, thank goodness. Uh, hey, thank you. Uh, take a look at the boilers, will you? You bet I will.
thing to say about anyone. Even Anderson, especially when you can't prove it. Prove so what? Frank, what on earth are you talking about? Cynthia, I found traces of corrosive acid on that cable. I'm convinced that Dan O'Reilly was murdered. Why, Hank, that's incredible. I could only prove it. But why would he want to kill Mr. O'Reilly? Why? Why are there men like Anderson? Oh, I'd like to pull him apart and see what makes him tick. You mustn't say things like that. What you say is true. Anything might happen. Hank, you must promise me that you'll be careful, please. Now, don't worry, Cynthia. Nothing's going to happen. But, Hank, I still can't understand. Why? Oil, Cynthia. Plenty of oil. Sorry, we didn't. 
didn't have time to have the place redecorated. But just make yourself comfortable, Mr. Langford. Sit down. Lean back and make yourself comfortable. You know, you're going to be our guest here until after the 10th of the month. Over here is going to be your special valet. Or valet. Which is it? Down there, the word it always did so me. High gluten pop. Over. Yeah. You've got a distinguished visitor who rates attention. <laughs> Give him plenty of it. And don't let him out of your sight for a minute. Who is it? Come in. Have you seen Hank, Miss Jackson? Why, he left for the well over two hours ago. Gosh, that's funny. I've been looking all over for him. And Mr. Anderson wants to see me right away, and I don't think I'd better go over there without him. That's strange. Where can he be? I don't know, but, but I'll find him. Thanks. This way, please. Come in, my boy. Come in. Sit down, son. Sit down. And your father was a very dear friend of mine. Ah, but then we must live for the living. I want to help you, son. That's why I sent for you. You like the oil business? Sure, I do. How would you like to work on one of my rigs? What about my well? Now, that's I... what I want to speak to you about. You know, your father was a very stubborn man. I said to him no less than a thousand times. Dan O'Malley, you're wasting your time. But my father's name was Dan O'Reilly. Oh, oh, oh right. <laughs> of course, of course. Now, for your father's sake, I'm willing to take the lease back. The Lord will be up in a day or two. And I'll put, say, a thousand dollars in the bank as a trust fund for it. Well, well, I don't know. Well, now, I... don't you think, as one of your father's oldest friends, I'm qualified to know what's best for you? I'm sure that's the way your father would wish it. Uh, Mr. Anderson, you're full of bunk. I've been looking for Hank all night. Nobody's seen him. Gosh, I'm worried. I'll go over and see Mr. Clemens. Uh, do that, will you, Miss Jackson? I have to get back to the well right away. All right, children. School's dismissed. Ready? Miss Clemens. Hank Lang has disappeared. Meet me at the wooden ring, seven o'clock. Go. Clemens. Meet me at the wooden ring, seven o'clock. Hank disappeared. Go oh, down. Right here, wouldn't ring seven o'clock, right in And when Winter Wedwiding came in the house, she said, Grandma, what great eyes you have. The better to see you, my child. Grandma, what great treats you have. The better to eat you, my child. Can you imagine that dirty rat? Better took me dirty on the chin. Well, that was my chair, I'd not get carried off. Well, Mr. So Winter Wedwiding came closer and closer. Sat on the bed. Ain't you sleeping yet? Good night, you right, right? Now, don't worry, boss. He's as safe with Homer as he would be if he had the whole National Guard with him. I ain't right, fit, fine. Hello? Yes? Yes, speaking.
Now get that mud on the telephone. I want him back here right away. Well, come on, don't stand there like a frozen and compose. Move! Frozen this. Go ahead, I'll take care of him. Thank you. 
How do you like military school, Clifford? Oh, Hank, will you please call me Fishtail just once? Mm -hmm. 